Hey guys, when you uh, go to put this MX carry together, it's probably easiest to just stick it in your tow bar. Use that as a bench, straight in. Uh, then let's get the bike channel, lay that in. Your bolts. Put them through that way. Next thing I do is put on the nose cone. So I get my six M8 bolts ready there. So nose cone. Put the bolts through from the outside. Same deal, washers and nylocks. When I tighten the channel up, all I do is look down. You just get the channel and the plate parallel, so you'll find with the nose cone on to be weighted that side, so you just put some pressure on it, get it pretty straight. When you go to tighten the nose cone, it tends to lay forward. So I just put it, just pull it back slightly so it's straight. Next job is a light kit. Light kit comes with these two set screws, these two brackets. See the bigger brackets for the front tire. That's got the number plate light on it. Next brackets at the back. But what you do with these set screws? Undo them. It's a washer, two washers, spring washer and a nut. So, the bulk goes through. Washer, spring washer, nut. Same this end. Washer, spring washer, nut. These need to be tight. Tighten this against the channel. Just a good nip. Tighten that. Right, in the light bracket, in the light bracket bag, there's also these. In the kit, there's two nylocks, two washers. Spin the first one on, about 15, 20 mil. Then you put a washer. Then you put the bracket. The washer and the nut. Put it up the right way. That's it. The reason the lights bolt on is if you ever load a lower clearance bike, you can grab it with your hand and just roll it down out of the way. Then when you've loaded the bike, you can roll it back up. Same this end, same deal. Nylock. Washer. Bracket, washer, nylock, zap it up. Uh, right, this is how the light kit comes, just in a bag, it'll be wrapped in foam. Obviously, take it out of the bag. Plastic, all you gotta look for, one of them, that's the number plate light. One of them has that at the bottom, so that's on the front tire end. Goes in. Six of these chassis tyres in each kit. So this is what you do. You get the cable pretty much at the join. Drop it through the slot. And there's a hole in the back of the... little plate that comes out. So I keep the join basically as it goes through the slot. Get a chassis tie, goes up from underneath back through the hole just like a zip tie. 
And what I do is just keep some pressure on the cable with your thumb, put your fingers under to hold the chassis tie, and just work your way out, pulling it tight as you go. See up here when you uh, get to the top, you're just going to have a little bit of slack left. And you just tuck it in the back of the light there. Same this way, so coming back this way, chassis tie over, back through the slot, hold the cable tight, pull it tight. You just keep nipping it tight as you go. Next, this is what I call a rear wedge behind the front tyre. There's three holes, two positions for this, and that's for the turnbuckle. So the furthest away is for a 21 inch front, that's for a 19 inch front. So we're going for 21, lay that there. Take the nut off, there's seven washers here, so what that's for, one washer on the bolt, put two on the inside, then just uh, put it through the wedge over the other side, because it's a bit of tolerance for the folding, sometimes you'll fit three washers there, sometimes you'll fit two washers. So and another washer and nut on the outside. This baby, your turnbuckle. This is the adjustment for the rear wedge. That's about where it's going to sit. Undo the, that just bolts on the back here. You need to have it as it's pictured there. The, bolt will be closest to you, the nuts away from you if you're standing on the outside of the rack and this is your gal cup head bolt, put that through and then we'll tighten it up. You want to give that, I make that reasonably tight, obviously so it still moves but you don't want it flopping side to side and by making it fairly snug it won't bang down when you let the pin out. This bolt at the back you're going to have to give that some stick. And then lastly, I just set that straight. And then we just pull the pin to make sure it drops down. Sometimes you might need to adjust it a little. That's it. So this is the loading ramp. And it stores straight on top of the bolt. You use the eye nut as a nut. This bolt has three purposes. It lowers the rear wedge. You use it as a breaker bar to tighten and loosen the rear ramp. When you go to loosen it, just tap it around to undo it. And it also locks the ramp on for when you're loading your bike. We have an option for extra eye nuts. That way you can uh, Use the hardware onto the foot pegs and also use tie downs off your frame, which is even stronger. So you have one set coming up to the pegs, one set up to your frame. That can face forward or back, doesn't matter. Whatever works best to secure your bike. There's the end cap, it's got a V cut out of it. That's to go around the bolt. So if the bolt's vertical, that's vertical. This is the hardware we supply. So, uh, they're just safety shackles, take out the pin, comes the nut, we'll see the shackle goes through the eye nut onto the turnbuckle. Pins back in. Generally I don't really tighten those up, I leave them loose, so if I'm out in the bush I can just take the pin out whip it out quickly and put them in my car in case someone wants to be funny. Snap hook goes on top, through your pegs. Every rack we sell comes with what I call a hitch lock, which is a U-bolt and a plate and a couple of shim plates. So the first thing to do is just get the rack in, line up your pinhole, that can be used on the side. Some cars can use both these plates, some will fit one, some will fit none, all receivers are slightly different. Put your pin in, Obviously the slots for the side for the hitch pin. Pin through. Then the one on top, usually if you lift the outside of the rack, 
take some weight off it. You can shimmy one in on top. The plate goes vertically. If you have a plastic surround, says Nissan Toyota, it's black or it's chrome, you just got to rip that off first. Go a couple of spring washers. Just nip it up evenly. Just a firm nip. Couple of lock nuts. That then locks this face to this face and prevents the rack rocking side to side. 